All right, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Math Lesson 64. We're taking our first foray into decimal numbers, and we're talking about using money to model decimal numbers. So let's see what this is all about. So before we dive in too much further, just want to say, do you remember? I still have some people struggling on basic place value. So remember, what we know so far, the first three digits, we call the no-name group. Ones, tens, hundreds. Then we add the thousand group. One thousand, ten thousand, one hundred thousand. The million group and the billion group, it works the same way. What I really am interested in talking about and what's going to play into today you got to be able to differentiate the difference between place value or if they ask value. Remember, place value is the value a digit will receive based on its position in a number. Like if I just wrote in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 here, or actually 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 123,456. And I was asking about the place value of the two. Well, that would be in the ten thousands place. But if they're asking for the value of the two, then you got to take the digit times ten thousand. What's two times ten thousand? Hopefully, you would know that would give you. 20,000. A big difference between place value and value, and sometimes kids read too fast and they'll mix it up. So make sure you know the difference. The place value is 10,000. The value of the two is 20,000. Digit times its place value. So Diving right into decimals right now, numbers to the right of the no-name group are what we call the decimal numbers. And they work the same as fractions to represent a number less than one whole. So if here's our three no-name places, then we would put in a decimal point and you'd have the tenths place immediately to the right, and the hundredths place. Those are the only two we're going to talk about today. And now we can finally go ahead and use the word and, because the decimal point is when we use the word and. So the most common use for decimal numbers is with money. And only with the decimal number do you say the word and. If I had something like this, let's write in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. How are you going to pronounce this guy? Most kids already can do it. First, you're going to say the no-name group. $123 and 45 cents. I think everybody knows that. The ones is just like a one dollar bill. The tens, the hundreds. Tenths is one tenth of one whole dollar. There would be your dimes because there's ten dimes making up a one dollar bill, right? There would be ten pennies making up a dime or a hundred pennies to make one whole dollar. So diving right into it right now, we're going to see a lot of problems like this and I'll show you what kids mostly trip on. What combination of dollars, dimes, and pennies make four dollars and sixty-five cents using the fewest coins possible? Well, if we use a place value chart, and you have one on page 407 of your book, if we write in 
and 65 cents. The big mistake kids will want to go with is they're not really reading the question. They want the answer in dollars, dimes, and pennies. They're not worried about quarters or nickels, are they? So now that we know that, it's actually pretty easy. How many dollars, dimes, and pennies do you need? Four dollars, six dimes, and five pennies. So that's actually going to be the answer that we'd write down. It would be four dollars, six dimes, and five pennies. There is no part that they are asking for nickels or quarters. So let's take a look at this guy. What is the place value of the four in $6.24? So again, if I use my place value chart, $6.24, what would be the place value of it? That would be the hundreds place, right? Make sure you spell it correctly. It has a little D in there. kind of trips people up. What is the value of the four in $6.24? Well, it's four in the hundredths place. It's actually worth four cents, isn't it? Let's try this one. What is the place value of the two in $9.24? Well, let's lay it out. Here we have nine in the ones place. 2 in the tenths place, and 4 in the hundredths place. The place value of the 2, that's going to be the tenths place. What is the value of the 2? Two? 2 in the tenths place, hey, that's got to be worth 20 cents. Check out this one. Is $3.67 Closer to $3.60 or $3.70? Well, let's take a look. Here it is seven cents away. Seven cents difference between $3.67 and $3.60. From $3.67 to $3.70, that's only three cent difference, right? Which one is it closest to? $3.70, because that's only three cents away. Let's try it one more time. Is $6.08 closer to $6 or closer to $6.10? Well, from $6.08 to $6, that's a difference of eight cents, right? But from $6.08 to $6.10, that is a difference of two cents. Which one is it closest to? It looks like it's closest to $6.10. I haven't met too many fifth graders who struggle on these. Check out this one, though, because it's a little different rounding concept for us. On his way home, Nick bought three notebooks for $1.49. What is a reasonable estimate for the cost of the notebooks? Now, up until this point, we've been saying round to the greatest place, right? But when you get a number like this, that's really, really close to the half dollar, Sometimes it's more reasonable to round to the nearest half dollar because that really doesn't hurt our brain too much. It's still pretty easy to do math with half dollars as well, right? So if we round to the nearest half dollar, a dollar forty nine is closest to a dollar and a half. I bet you we can still do this mentally in our head. Three notebooks for a dollar fifty. A dollar fifty plus another dollar and fifty cents plus another 
dollar and fifty cents. Do you have it? Hopefully you do. It's pretty easy. Four dollars and fifty cents, right? Now, if you couldn't do that in your mind, you could still set up on scratch paper and either go a dollar and fifty cents times three or a dollar and fifty cents plus a dollar and fifty cents plus a dollar and fifty cents. But I'm pretty sure most of us should be able to do this one mentally. And that is the end. And